Hi, welcome to MarinaReef.com videos. My name is Paul. Today we're going to demonstrate the regular monthly service for a Fluval 407 filter. And we're also going to go over some things that you're going to want to do at the 3 month, 6 month, 9 month, and 12 month intervals where Fluval recommends doing additional maintenance and or replacing parts. Before you get started, you want to have everything kind of ready to go. This will speed it up. About the only thing that will make this easier is if you can get somebody else to do it for you. Unfortunately, I could not find anybody else, so you're stuck with me. I've got a bucket. You could also use a Rubbermaid basin. I've got a couple of gallons of water I've removed from the tank. Before you start, maybe two days before, you want to make sure you have some water ready for your tank, with be it fresh water or salt water, because we're going to use a couple gallons here, and we're going to pour maybe one or two gallons out of the filter itself. I've got a towel here to do some hand cleaning. I've got a couple of brushes here. This is Hagen's and Preller brushes. You can use any similar brush, but these are inexpensive and, and they're just easy to use. I've got the media that I'm going to replace in the filter out of its package. I've pre-rinsed it all in tap water, um, so it's ready to go. And last but not least, I've got a little bit of silicone lube. You want to make sure you use the silicone-based lube. Um, not Vaseline or anything petroleum based that will actually degrade the rubber parts. So any type of silicone lube, you can get this um, online from Marine and Reef, of course. Um, if you don't have that, you can get it at a pool supply um, store. Or I think any Ace Hardware carries that as well. So before doing anything, we want to unplug the filter, of course. You always want to make sure your hands are dry before you're unplugging this or plugging it back in. So the filter is unplugged. I'm going to come over here. We're going to engage our aqua stop. This one's going to allow us to remove the hoses from the filter without getting water all over the place. A whole lot of water all over the place. And we're just going to set that down on the towel. I'm going to grab my hand towel, sop up a little water. You can see there's still quite a bit in there. And then I am going to take this over to a sink and I'm going to start pouring some water out. All right, so before I remove the top, I'm going to try to get some water out of here. This way, when we open it up, water doesn't go all over the place. Again, I've got a towel down here just to keep things to drip on. Take the other head off. Doesn't want to come off. There we go. Just going to set that aside. As I can see already, this filter is extremely dirty. I'm not sure why that popped off. It shouldn't have. So, first thing we're going to do is take out the side bracket. It's extremely dirty as we can see. And this proves that the mechanical function of this filter is working very well. Otherwise, all this stuff would be floating around your tank. I'm going to move this back over the sink. Just try to squeeze some of this water out of here. Gets off. Pull this out. Get that drain down for a little bit. Pour the remainder of the water into the sink. Looks pretty clean in there. If there was a bunch of stuff in there, I would rinse it out with a little bit of tap water. You want to make sure you never use any type of cleaners or chemicals on anything that goes inside the filter. That would be a problem. Okay, we're ready to begin. Uh, if you refer to the Fluval manual, they have the maintenance schedule for everything. 
Um, it's in, I think, 150 languages and 1,000 pages long in really small type. So we have prepared this nice chart you can download from our website or buy with any of our bundles that gives you which month and which service needs to be done. So we're going to start with the foam. The biofoam here is the first point of contact with the tank water as it comes in, so you can see it gets pretty, pretty dirty. So I'm going to pry these out of here. Yeah, we're going to throw these down in here and I'm going to let them sit in there for a second. And we're just going to kind of gently clean these off. Um, every month you want to clean this. You really want to get this junk out of your tank. As you can see, these are pretty dirty. Um, Blue will suggest that you replace these every six months. They'll just start to break down. There's three sets of biofoam, two here and one at the bottom we'll see in a few minutes. They make a multi-pack of foam, the biofoam. Uh, you can buy them individually, but it's far cheaper and you are gonna replace them all at the same time. I will caution you that you don't wanna replace all the biomedia at the same time. So we're gonna be talking about you know, the Biomax in a little bit that you're gonna replace about half of every six months. Um, and then these biofoams if you have a fairly new tank or an overstock tank, you don't want to replace all of that at the same time. So you can just do the outside sets of the foams and the biomedia, and then the next month do the inside sets or something like that. Um, if you're worried about it, we will have bacteria here um, that cycle, and you can put some of that in. It's not a bad idea to use it every time you do the surface. All right. One more dunk. This filter was on a co-worker's tank in his home. And definitely got it dirty for us. All right, so we're gonna place this. Comfy side is out. This is the most surface area. So the inside foam, um, this has been protected a little bit. As you can see, it's still pretty dirty. Um, so we're gonna throw that in there. And get these chunks out of here. Same thing, we're just gonna gently swish these around in the water. Back in our filter, there's a small side and a large side on the round outside, so it's pretty easy to determine how it goes back in there. So now we're going to look at our media baskets. This top has phosphate, ammonia, or nitrite pads if you're using it. In this case, we're just using the phosphate pads. They're only good for about a month, so we're just going to toss these. Underneath is the carbon in bags. Again, it's only good for about a month, so we're going to toss that. Um, carbon's important, I believe, in the, both fresh water and salt water. It takes colorants out, so it keeps um, yellow water um, clear. Um, it also removes things that kind of smell. We're going to look at our next. In the 407, there's a set, a set of carbon bags in there. Let's start those. Now, like with our biomedia, um, this we're just going to give a little bit of a rinse down in here. Um, Google does suggest that you replace this half of it at the six month intervals. Um, it's pretty inert, but there's a lot of small holes in there that'll get clogged up eventually. Um, if you store your filter for a long time, you want to 
probably replace all of it. And then finally in the bottom here, this is the quick clear pads, which is the finest amount of filtration, although it's already been protected by this biofoam. Um, these are just never gonna get them clean. So we're just gonna discard them. And finally at the bottom, we have the third biofoam we discussed, it's that same bumpy surface. And again, we're just gonna do that a quick rinse. Um, this is the third foam that comes in that bio foam value pack, and we're going to replace this every six months. All right, put our media back in here before it came out. Put our new carbon in here. You will notice I took four carbons out. That was what came with the filter. For some reason, when you buy carbon from Fluval over here, it comes in a three pack, but the amount that's in that box is equivalent to the four that came out. So we're gonna put two in there. That pardon me, I forgot something here. So, got a quick clip. This again is gonna be changed and replaced every month. One remaining carbon. Um, I've already rinsed this. It's critical you rinse this in a little tap water because there's a lot of fine particles that are in there that we want to get rid of. We're going to put our plastic pads back in there. If you're using nitrate, uh, pardon me, nitrite or ammonia pads, you're going to put those in there as well. Up. Put it over here into our filter. Cover that one there. All right. Next, we're going to look at the motor head. The motor head has got the critical parts here. Um, we're going to look at most of these um, every month. We're going to look at the impeller, the impeller cover here. And this O-ring, these are critical parts um, that make the water move and keep the water from uh, leaking out of there. So it's a critical that you look at this every month. We're gonna open this up by pulling back and up. And I'll just snap out like that. And we'll take our towel, just basically pulling this off here. All these internal rubber parts, we're going to want to lubricate with that silicone lube we talked about. The easiest way to do that is to tear this open. Just squeeze a bunch of it in the corner of the towel. Wet that out there. We don't need a ton of silicone on stuff, and we just need a thin film. So I'm just going to take my fingers there. Gently wipe that there. Just get a nice even coating on there. All right, I'm gonna pop our impeller out here. Impeller shaft. Um, this looks nice and clean, so we're not going to worry about it too much. We're going to expect the impeller. Um, if there's any pits or anything broken or cracked, you're going to want to replace it immediately. Um, these are critical parts, and these are parts that Hagen suggests you're going to replace every year. I believe everybody should have these three parts on hand. Um, this tab right here tends to break off, and of course it's going to break off when you're opening it to service. Um, the impeller can just get something that gets eaten in there, or the shaft can go bad. Um, so these three parts are in the motorhome maintenance kit that Fluval makes right here. Um, maybe you don't need it the first two months you have your filter, but you're going to use it at the end of the year anyway, so if you have it on hand, if you get in here and you're doing your maintenance on a Friday night, the stores are closed, and all of a sudden you break this tab or you realize something's gone bad in there. Um, this is pretty clean in here. Um, year or two, when the filter's really old, you may want to get in there and brush this out. You may want to also use it on the impeller, but it's in pretty good shape here. in there. I'm going to be very gentle. That's ceramic. It's really easy to break. Color right in there. It's kind of underneath there. It should be able to hear it snap in place like 
that thing. Okay, we're also gonna look at our O-ring here. Make sure it's nice and clean. This seals the whole body. This is very critical. Uh, you wanna inspect it, make sure it's not cracked, starting to get bigger or anything like that. And again, we're gonna find the corner of our towel with lube on it. easier to seal up by fewer problems if you do that. There's one other part in here. This is something you want to do maybe twice a year, every six months. So this is where they're prime the filter if you need to. And this is the primer cover. And this is only on the 407. And it just kind of snaps out. This is two things on the side. So the things we want to look at is this clapper here. It's critical. There's nothing keeping that open. Rinse that in there. Of course, I'm going to lose my flapper. I'm never going to find it in here ever again. Here we go. the cylinder here. This is actually how it primes. There's a gasket here and then there's also an o-ring here on the shaft. So I'm going to pull it all the way back, look in there, make sure there's nothing stuck in there, wipe it out if need be, wipe the shaft off. Then we're going to find the corner with our silicone lube on it. And again, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to take some of that silicone glue, wipe it inside the wall there. We're going to come over and we're just going to put some on the shaft here. So then when I go move it back and forth a couple of times, it's going to get that silicone on that O-ring in there. And it's going to get the silicone on this O-ring that's right there. So we want to leave it all the way down. Put the cover back on here. Good audible snap on both sides. That looks pretty good. Back on the top here. Seal. All right, there are a few other things that Hagen is gonna suggest you do um, maybe every three months. Um, I've left this on the tank. This is a new one just for demonstration. There's O-rings here on the Aquastop. You want to clean those and use that silicone to lubricate them too. This is the other point where this filter can leak. So it's really important you do this. It's probably not a bad idea to do it every month. You've got it out anyway. You've got your towel ready. You've got your silicone there. And then once or twice a year, the inlet and outlet, um, probably as much for appearances, but you're going to want to take them from the tank. You're going to want to clean these off. Um, you're going to open this up. There's a little ball in there, a little valve. Make sure that's cleaned out. If it's not, rinse it out in that tank. Um, once a year, you're going to inspect all the hoses and all these gray rubber pieces. If you start to see them cracking or they just look like they're starting to discolor or fall apart, you want to replace them. The hoses once a year, you're going to want to clean out, maybe just run some tap water through them. When they get old and they start to really get plugged up over time, Fluval does make a couple of brushes that you can pull through there. And this one you push through, this one you pull through. You can use these also to clean this out. It's not going to happen in the first year or so, but eventually crud will build up in there and it's just going to slow the flow of your filter down. So that pretty much sums it up. I appreciate you watching. If there's any questions you have about this, um, things we haven't covered, things that weren't clear, um, please feel free to contact us. We have multiple Aquarius on staff who have done this multiple times and really know what they're doing. And we're more than happy to help you out. Our goal is to make sure that you stay in the hobby as long as possible. And to that end, doing maintenance is critically important. Thank you.